This video will be a lot more advanced than my usual videos. I won't be explaining every individual function because that would just take too much time. If you just want the finished model, you can find it in my Discord server. The link's in the description below. Now first off you can see I have two models here. And I save them in a folder in the workspace. They are just regular character models. Next we have the UI. So the UI is pretty simple. I have a viewport here. So the character model will be displayed here, like in the intro. I have a background, which is just this background image. Now you have the next button for the next page. Then I have a skip button, which shouldn't be here. Then we have the NPC name. I place it here. And then we have text level 1 and text level 2. So we will display two sentences at a time. And of course I made it all scale with the screen. So if I resize this, you can see it scales. Now we have our script. Now inside the script I have a module script where I store all the dialogue. So here I have the NPC name. This is Jesito 4 and Jesito 5, as you can see in the NPCs here. So page 1 has these two sentences and page 2 has these two sentences. And Jesito 5 only has one sentence on the one page. So now let's go to our main script. Now you can see we have some variables here. But these aren't too important for now. We do also have a button here. We have this stored in workplace storage. This is an E button that will show up on the character when you're in range. So that you know that you can talk to the character. Now the rest is pretty uh, standard. Here I require the module script. We also want to keep track of the page. And which MC we're talking to. Now let's start with the E button. So as you can see, I create a loop here. Now if the character dies, we have to pass this script, otherwise it's going to crash. So that's why I have an if char statement here. Next we use a for loop to go to all the MCs in this folder. Then we check the distance based on the magnitude. So if the magnitude is smaller than 20, we will place the E button inside the character. If the distance is greater than 20, we will place the button inside the record storage. And we disable the UI. So when the player walks away from the NPC, the chat will close. In between here we have an extra statement. So we can check which character is the closest. Since we don't want the button to appear on every character, or a random one, we check which one is the closest. And then we give the button. So to show what I mean, let's go to play. Let's remove these characters. You can see the E appears here, and now it goes here. I'm going to walk away, it goes away. Next we want to set up the UI. So out the function over here. So I use the user input service to detect the key input. So if the key is E, then we start the UI. So if the button is in replace storage, then this script won't run, because the button is not in a character, which means you're not in range. And next we have a check to see if the UI is already enabled or not, because if you're already talking to the character, you can talk to the same character again, but you can't talk to another character. So when you talk to an NPC, and then you walk to another NPC, and press E, the old conversation will stop, and a new one will start. Next we set the current NPC, so we know who we are talking with. Then we start setting up the UI. So we set the text label for the name, to the current NPC name. We set the current page to 1. Then for the viewport frame, we make a copy of the character, and we call it dummy here. We remove anything that's inside the viewport frame right now and put the dummy inside the viewport frame. I put the dummy on this location. This works for me, it might be different for you. You can try and error until you find a good position for your model. Then we set the humanoid to the display distance to none. This hides the dummy's name. Otherwise when you talk to the NPC, the name will start floating in a random position in your game because the model is still in the workspace. We also remove anything from the primary part so that the E button is removed, because the E button is stored in the primary part. Otherwise you get the same issue as with the name, that the button will start floating somewhere in space. So now most of our UI is prepared. And next I create a typing function. Now as you've seen in the intro, it types letters one by one. So I create a separate function to do that. Now first off this function takes two strings. As you can see dialog is this module. And it goes to current current page, which is page one. 
and sentence one and sentence two. So now we go to the typing function. You can see a text one and text two. First, we enter the text labels in case there's already something written. Then we make sure the UI is actually enabled, just in case. Now when someone presses the next button before the dialog is done typing, we want the dialog to skip and not overlap each other. So to know when the player went to the next page, we store a local variable of the page. So we put the current page into page, and then in this loop we check if page is the same as current page, then we continue, otherwise it breaks. Now we want to look to the lets in this text. So to do that we use string.len. This gets the length of this string. So this loop starts at one, and ends at uh, however long the string is. If you have a 10 letter sentence, it will be 10 times. Then make sure the UI is enabled and that the player hasn't skipped the page yet. Next, I remove the spaces because the spaces make it look very stuttery. I didn't like that. So I use string.sub, then text ii to see if it's a space. So this basically checks if the current letter is a space or not. And if it's a space, we will skip it. And next we write the text into the text label and we again use string.sub so this will write the first letter of the sentence until letter i and this i will go up one every time it loops and after this is finished the first sentence it will wait zero to three seconds and then start the second sentence you can measure the times however you want if you want a bit faster or slower now let's go to the next button over here so just do a click detection here on the next button. We change the current page to current page plus one. Then next we check if this current page has text or not. So we check the module to see if this page exists. If it doesn't exist, then we close the UI. If it does exist, we use the typing function to type the next sentence. So page.currentPage. Now that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below or join my Discord server. I'm more active on there.